This is a melted 3.0 Duramax diesel piston, and I bet you're wondering, whoa, what happened to your truck? No, it's not from my truck. This is actually from the YouTube channel, I Do Cars, where Eric tears down engines, and he tore down a 3.0 Duramax before, and it caused a bunch of stir. And then, so now this one is actually a warranty rejected 2020 Silverado 1500 engine destroyed at just 45,000 miles. We're going to get into that. Why wasn't this covered under warranty? How did he get this engine? I've got a couple little ideas. Uh, you can see that there's a fuel injector in the background right here. And that's simply because I'm going to discuss how this piston could have melted like this in the way that the injectors work. So we'll go into detail on that. But I also want to talk about the, obviously, the warranty implications. Why wasn't this covered under warranty? A lot of questions. A lot of you guys have these same questions because they've been asked to me. And that's good because I like questions. This is actually not the worst of the melted pistons either. This one is the second worst melted piston. Now, in the beginning, I was like, oh, man, I really wanted the worst. But after seeing this in person, I'm glad I have this one. Now, let's talk about the history of this vehicle a little bit because I was able to pull up some stuff through Carfax and some other ways. And I do know that this vehicle was sold 812 of 20 and it was leased. Now, how long that lease was, I believe it was a three year lease because my paperwork shows that it was in auction actually on 10 2 of 23. It was sold at auction. So it started its life out in Montana and then it was sold at an auction and it currently lives in Arizona. Now, there's not too many miles in between, so we don't really have any history on that. But what we do have is Starting with January 19th, it's had a bunch of work done to it. By a bunch of it, I mean they went in for a reductant injector, and then they went in for a NOx-2 injector that was at a separate visit, and then another separate visit at 45,000 miles with a NOx converter with filter. So that means they were having some emissions-related issues. Now, when did this engine get swapped out? We do not know. I do know, based off of the video from I Do Cars, that he got it from a reputable company. And a reputable company, I'm assuming he buys his engines from some company that sells core engines. So I'm assuming this was just an unrebuildable core, and so they sold it for him for really cheap, sound like a couple hundred bucks, based on how he was talking on there which is super cool. And then he showed it to us on the teardown. Now I stopped right here because he's pointing at the pistons being melted. And I believe I have cylinder number two because number three was the super burned one. If I'm not mistaken, I'm just going off of memory here, but I'm going to pull up a GM bulletin. By GM bulletin, I mean, uh, this is based off of NHTSA where it is a GM bulletin, but they're sharing it. And these are nice full color photos. Check that out. So this is basically talking about aftermarket power up devices and what to look for piston can also be melted on the lip of the combustion bowl or the top of the pistons can be melted look at what we have here so there's a link in the description about that bulletin right there so we're not going to go too into detail but this is pulled up for older 6.6 .6 duramax diesels and i'm not saying that all aftermarket programming is bad i'm just saying that this could happen when you're programming with aftermarket power-up devices. And that's based off of what the information provided here is, which I find this factual because I've seen it in real life in my own use. Now let's talk about this piston right here. We're gonna do a, a close-up of it. All right, so let's pay close attention to the markings on this piston. Let's discuss how this works. All right, so we have our piston right here. Let me fix the zoom for you. We have our piston right here. And it's going up and down, obviously up and down. And our fuel injector is actually right on the top here. So when it's at the top TDC, it's going to inject fuel and it's going to go into this bowl right here. The way that that's lipped, that's where the burn actually takes place. And that's where it explodes and pushes the piston down. So these little lines that we see right here in the top of the piston, those are pretty much where the injector was spraying. So I feel like Based on my experience, that's an injector sticking open for too long and essentially the cylinder pressures and temperature is so high inside here that it's actually burning these little marks where the fuel is spraying directly onto there. What you're probably thinking is, okay, so you said an injector sticking open. This injector may have failed, not this one. This is just a sample one. This did not come from the engine, but it is an LM2 injector. So what I'm saying is if the fuel injector stuck open, it would have been covered under warranty. 
there's no way around it. Definitely would have been covered under warranty. So we're going to knock that out as a possibility because it's not covered under warranty. It would have shown. So what other issues could we be working with? Could there have been gasoline inside this cylinder or inside this engine? I'm going to say no, this isn't caused by gasoline just because it's not like that on all the pistons. There was actually only two or three of the pistons that were like this. Now, if it was a stuck injector, the other thing is that it would have only been that one cylinder. It wouldn't have been multiple cylinders because the likeliness of multiple fuel injectors sticking open, very, very unlikely. All right, so could it have been a plugged converter? Well, based on the history of the converter being replaced at 45,000 miles, that is a possibility, but I would think that there's more cylinders that would have been affected by this and not just these two or three like this. Now, in the video, there was mention of pump timing and... I don't believe that to be a possibility because if the pump did jump timing for some odd reason, it would not have changed when the firing was actually taking place because that's all controlled electronically. So how does something like this happen? Well, if you go with aftermarket tuning, they're going to go in there and they're going to change the duration of the injector staying open. They're going to change how much pressure there is. And that's basically increasing cylinder pressure, increasing heat inside the cylinder. And that's where I want to discuss on what I believe happened here because there's two things that I believe could have been the, the cause of this. One is, was it aftermarket tuning? It's a possibility. Or was it one of those plug-in devices that just fool the fuel pressure into thinking that it's actually reading lower when it's reading higher and then it'll create a situation where it ramps up the fuel pressure and sprays it in there i believe it's one of those because just the way that it's melted on the edges here you can see this piston is completely melted so you can see the markings on the piston right here in the piston bowl and that's all melted right there it's melted on the outside of it as well it's because the heat has essentially gone way beyond inside here and extended out to here. Now on the severely burned piston, you'll see that it actually burned through it. Let's talk about possible oil consumption and that being the cause of this. I'm gonna say no right off the bat. And I can say that based on how the top of this piston looks. Now, if we had an oil consumption issue, we would see cleanliness around the outside of the piston and we don't see any of that. None of the pistons show any signs of having clean areas around there. Basically what happens is the oil control rings are sticking and oil is able to get past and it'll actually start to clean off the outer edges. And we don't have any of that. This is definitely very dark throughout, no signs of oil consumption on this whatsoever. So that's what I believe happened. I know a lot of you guys have emailed me on, well, what, what happened? What do you think happened to this? Is it going to happen to mine? I don't think this is a problem with the 3.0 Duramax in itself. I think, it was either some bad tuning out there or it was one of those plug-in power-up devices. And quite possibly they could have had it on a high setting and they could have been towing and basically burned this thing down because they're not able to monitor EGTs. I don't know what happened exactly. Now, what I fear is that the person that originally leased this vehicle, they melted this engine down and then went as cheap as possible to go to swap it out and they bought a used engine and swapped it out because there's no record even in the car facts of getting a repair done of this sort and if they went to a reputable shop it would typically be reported on there even oil changes get reported on the car facts when in this case this vehicle doesn't even have any reportings of oil changes or maintenance being done except for the one free one provided from the factory so I think uh, there's a lot of stuff being hidden and it's unfortunate because I do believe that the new owner of this vehicle that now has it in Arizona that's gone to the dealership three different times for multiple repairs, they're dealing with the after effects of this swap out. I could be wrong on that. That's just my speculation, but based on my um, experience, that's what I believe is going on. But here's a close up of that piston. I know it's quite incredible how it melted down. This is a very, very stout piston and this is an LM2. So for the LZ0, you guys know from the video or from the channel that they actually went to steel pistons. So it's more unlikely for this to happen. And the LZ0 should actually be more robust and be able to handle higher cylinder pressures, higher temperatures, all of the sorts. But we'll find that out in the future when uh, Eric from I Do Cars tears down more of these engines for us. Let me know in the comments what you think happened here. Did I get it right? Do you have uh, alternative ideas? I'm open to hearing them. Let's hear it. Till next time, see ya.